Hello everyone, welcome back to Medwitz Made Simple. Before starting to watch this video, please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon nearby to get notified as soon as I upload a new video. In this video, we're going to see about myelodysplastic syndromes, which are abbreviated as MDS. So, this comes under uh, myeloid neoplasms. Myeloid neoplasms are neoplasms of bone marrow. So, this includes acute myeloid leukemia myelodysplastic syndromes and chronic myeloproliferative disorders. If you guys didn't know, I already made a video on acute myeloid leukemia and I have provided the link of that video in the comment section of this video. So after watching this one, please go and check that one out. In this video, we're going to see about myelodysplastic syndromes. So what is myelodysplastic syndromes in the first place? Myelodysplastic syndromes are stem cell disorders which are characterized by maturation defects that are associated with ineffective hematopoiesis. So what happens is, there are precursor stem cells which are present in the bone marrow and they need to mature into uh, mature forms of WBCs, RBCs, etc. So if there are maturation defects uh, such as those which occur in myelodysplastic syndrome, what happens is, um, there may be uh, hematopoiesis but the cells won't be effective enough to carry out their function. So, um, that's what is happening in myodysplastic syndrome. So there are basically two types of myodysplastic syndromes. They are primary myodysplastic syndrome, which is also known as idiopathic, the secondary um, myodysplastic syndrome. The idiopathic type is the most common, and it's the thing which is uh, in uh, the thing in which the pathogenesis is unclear. The secondary myodysplastic syndrome is the one which is caused due to uh, the use of cancer chemotherapy drugs and uh, the one which occurs following radiotherapy and this is abbreviated as TMDS and this one is more severe compared to the primary one. So talking about the pathogenesis of myodysplastic syndromes, um, there are three main factors which are um, involved in the pathogenesis of myodysplastic syndrome. They include epigenetic factors, RNA splicing factors, and transcription factors. Epigenetic factors are those which affect the um, epigenome uh, and the factors which are involved in that such as DNA methylation and histone modification and by doing so they are involved in, uh, acu uh, the involved in causing myelodysplastic syndrome. Uh, these factors are also involved in and the pathogenesis of acute myeloid leukemia, which is AML. The next one is uh, RNA splicing factors. So the RNA splicing factors are affected in few cases of uh, myelodysplastic syndromes. The third one is transcription factors. The transcription factors are uh, essential for the normal uh, development of the precursor stem cells in the bone marrow. So if they are affected, the, there won't be effective hematopoiesis and this is one of a uh, significant uh, pathogenic factor in myodysplastic syndrome. So this picture is the one which I've shown you, which I've showed you um, uh, two slides back and this one is basically showing ring sideroblasts. So these cells are present in uh, myodysplastic syndrome. The stain which is performed here is um, Prussian blue stain. This shows the uh, iron laden macrophages, um, and um, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, iron laden, iron laden mitochondria, uh, which are present inside the cells. Um, this cell is basically pseudo pseudo Huey cells. So, normally in a neutrophil, the nu the nucleus is multi lobed, right? But in the case of the pseudo Huey cells, what happens is the nucleus in neutrophils are just bi lobed and it's different from a normal neutrophil as you can see in this picture um, and there are also myeloid blasts in the bone marrow uh, myeloid blasts are those which I've described you in the previous video about acute myeloid leukemia these are the characteristic cell which are seen in acute myeloid leukemia so how do you identify myeloid, uh, uh, myeloid blasts it is by um, specific uh, rod like uh, structure which is known as our rods which is uh, uh, let me spell it out for you uh, it is um, a u e r our rods which are present in the cytoplasm of the myeloid blasts as you can see here which is present near the nucleus 
is the myeloblasts and these are basically uh, the characteristic feature in uh, AML and they are also present in myodysplastic syndrome but not in that much amount which uh, compared to acute myeloid leukemia. So now let's see about the clinical features of um, myodysplastic syndromes. It is very common in older adults similar to acute myeloid leukemia more often about the age of 70 so older people are more affected and the symptoms include weakness recurrent infections and bleeding so these symptoms basically suggest underlying bone marrow failure in these patients weakness is due to anemia which is due to decrease in rbc count or a decrease in hemoglobin infections are due to uh, uh, deficient in the uh, wbc count which means decrease in wbc count um, a ble recurrent bleeding is due to thrombocytopenia which is decreased platelet production from the bone marrow.